Hi everyone. Hey, this is Evangelist Ivan Tuttle up here, and I'm with Real Heaven Encounters Ministry. It's a, it's a new ministry we started up. It's called Real Heaven Encounters. And the reason I'm bringing this ministry to you is that there are so many people out there that, that have so many claims into things and claiming they've been to heaven or hell or wherever. And I'd like to just clear the air on a lot of these things and a lot of things that people are going around saying so that you know what lines up with the word of God and what lines up with my experience. Because people have asked me over and over again, could you please tell us more about heaven? Could you tell me more about hell? So today, since we are called Real Heaven Encounters, I'm going to read some things out of my book. This is my book, Entrapment. Oop, hit my microphone there. This is my book, Entrapment. And this book is sold on Amazon. And you can go to Amazon anytime you want. Look up Entrapment and Ivan Tuttle. Uh, you can do that. Or you can go to www.entrapmentheavenandhell.com. And that's a website that we have set up that when you purchase a book, uh, it'll go directly, when you click on to buy a book, it takes you directly to the Amazon site where you can get the book. Um, it also, it's in Kindle format as well. And if once we set up our website, you'll be able to write us directly. If you want, if you want just an ebook, we'll give you an ebook for a lot less. The book, the book is only $12 online. So when you go to get the book, Entrapment, uh, and you go to get it online, it's only $12. And that's all you got to remember. It's 12 bucks there. I think it's $9.99 for the Kindle. But we have a special thing set up that's going to start, I think it's the middle of this next week coming up, where you're going to be able to click on our website and purchase an e-copy of the book for just $7. Saves everybody a lot of money. And people like, people like the e-format. They like reading it on their phones or on their tablets or something. But my experience is... I died, I went to hell, I went to heaven, and I came back. And I was dead for well over an hour. So, and all this is documented, you know, as to what happened to me and everything. So, I want to share some of this experience with you. And starting today, I'm going to start sharing an experience with you from heaven. I want to tell you what happened when I got to heaven, exactly what happened. But remember this, now, I was in hell first. So you're going to hear what I heard when I was in hell that released me out of the pit of hell to go to heaven. And then I'm going to read a little bit and not just read the book. I promise you it won't be that boring. I'm not just going to read the book. Of course, the, from what I understand, the book's not boring. So I'm going to read some things out of the book. And then I'm going to go into some more detail because that's what people are looking for. People want to know the details. What happened? What did you do? You know, what, what was the things really like? What did they look like, etc. Tonight or today, whenever you're watching this, you're going to be able to find out. Now I'm going to move my microphone just a little bit here so I can get this up. So I'm going to start at chapter five. So any of you have the book, I'm going to start at chapter five. And if you have your book, you can read along with me. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to read it out loud. And I'm going to read a part of it a couple of portions of chapter five, and then I want to go into detail about it. Now, to set this up, I'm in hell right now in the book, not, not here. And by the way, do you like our backdrop? Isn't that kind of neat? You know, we've, we were able to do some things to set this studio up so that you folks could really have some nice experience. We have some other backdrops and things that we can use, but this is one of my favorites, and I really like it. Uh, if you want to know, um, this reminds me of going to heaven and coming back. It just reminds me of some things. And that special blue color that you see, well, actually, the blue color is over here. And the blue color that you see, that, to me, every time I see that in outer space, it reminds me of heaven, and I get homesick. And if you notice, on my book... That color, whoop, let me tilt this down for the lights. That color is in my book. And I did that for a reason. And so, starting in chapter five. All of a sudden, I heard a voice like a mighty roar of thunder that said, It is not his time yet. His mother has been praying for him since he was a little boy. You must release him now. I made a promise. 
the evil spirit that had a hold of me released me immediately. And I seemed to just fly through space upward and out of hell in seconds. Suddenly, there was bright light everywhere. Everything glowed. I felt like I had never felt before. These wonderful feelings all through my being. Not only did I have hope, I knew I was in the presence of a heavenly being. I was just outside of this beautiful place, just outside of a gate. The gate looked like it was made of pearls and it radiated in beauty. But the light came, but the light that came from it and from the city inside the gate was unbelievable. It was a light that you not only see or was not only seen, but that permeates every aspect of your being. The feeling that comes over a person is so euphoric that nothing in life is sad anymore. You only feel joy and happiness, no sorrow of any kind. At this time, there was nothing holding on to me like it was when I was in hell. And I had freedom to move around. So I started to go into the gate. As I moved closer, the angel, an angel appeared to me and told me I could not stay there yet, that it was not my time. I could see everything inside the gates and I could feel everything everyone else felt, but I wasn't allowed to stay or run around and do things like I would have liked to do. The angel that stopped me at the gate was a massive being, much like a human, human but larger than life. He had hair down to his shoulders and he was wearing some type of white gown that really seemed to glow. His hair was sort of light brown to dark blonde. And by earthly standards of his measurements, I would say that he was about seven feet tall. When he spoke to me, he had the gentlest voice, yet every word had such power with it. It was clear to me that it was clear to me at that point how powerful words are. It made me instantly think about the power of God's words when he speaks. It becomes easy for me to understand how the whole universe was made by his spoken word. I want to pause for a minute. I was in hell. I was in a place that was totally hopeless. There was no hope. There was no way I'm getting out of there. And then as this demon that had a hold of me was going to put me in my permanent place forever in hell. That's when that voice rang out. I will never forget that voice. It, it, that voice just permeates everything you have. It just goes right through you. And that voice just rang out and that demon shuddered in fear. And the demon just like, like the demon just looked and let go of me immediately, immediately. And, and it, remember, this was the demon that I was trying to fight off. If you, well, if you read my book, you know that and I'll get into that in another time that we speak here, but I was in heaven now and it was so euphoric. You see, when you're in heaven, it's, it's the most beautiful, wonderful feeling you could ever have. You never think about things anymore that, that are sad. You can't, it's, it just permeates everything. It's, it's like, ah, oh, man, it's the greatest feeling on earth. Listen, I used to be in the drugs and, and then I used to be a runner and, and both those things get you high. When you run, you get really high. You know, when you get done running, it's like, ah, and all those endorphins get released in your body and it's a great feeling. Well, when I did drugs, I, I tried to get high too, but nothing, nothing, nothing even compares, not even one, one millionth of what you feel like when you're in heaven. When you're in heaven, it's just, ah, every part of you, such a wonderful, wonderful feeling. And the light in heaven, it's like, it's, it's everywhere. There's no shadows. There's nothing like that. And it's just beautiful. The light is just awesome. It's one of the most beautiful lights you could ever imagine. It's, you know, when you go out in the sun and you feel that heat of the sun and that light, just you close your eyes and, and you can still see the light through it. You know, the light's still permeating through there in heaven. The glory of God that shines through there is so beautiful and so wonderful. It's way beyond anything the sun could ever give you. It's way beyond comparison. And as I'm reading my book, 
reading this little bit of the chapter to you. I, I want it to make sure that you understand what I'm talking about in this book. Now, the angel, just real quick, in heaven, there's no measurements. There's no time. Now, I'll explain this to you. And since you're watching the first video, you'll always remember this. Heaven is. It is. Heaven just is. It is always. It's always been there. It, it, it is there now. And it will always be there. It just is. God is the I am. And heaven is. It just is. It's always there. No matter what. It was there at the beginning. It's there now. And it is there in the future. Even though we're here in the present Heaven's already in the future. Heaven knows everything. You can see everything. Everything's done. Heaven knows all of it. I know that sounds crazy, but that's exactly what it's like. Heaven just is. And that angel, wow, that dude was big. I mean, I'm standing next to it. And I'm looking up at it. And it, it's just, he was so gentle. But his voice had this power, you know, boom. But it wasn't mean, it wasn't strong, bad. It was just, oh, man, when he spoke, boom. And, and it just made me think when God formed the earth and he said, let there be light, boom, power. And that's the power we have inside of us. If you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, you got that power. You got it. And when you say things, boom, they happen. Speak health into somebody. Boom. Watch somebody get healthy. Don't be afraid to try it. That's why, if you notice, one of you people that I prayed for before, I speak healing into your body. And I do that. And I'll speak it into your body because I know that the words have power. We are made in His image. In His image. And if we're made in His image, that means we're made like Him. That means we have certain things in us. With the spirit of God in us. Listen. We have a spirit to begin with. Because we're made in his image. When we choose to give our lives to the Lord. Now we have the spirit of God inside of us. We have the Holy Spirit inside of us. You get filled with the Holy Spirit. You've got that inside of you too. Even people that aren't living for the Lord. When they say things. When they say bad words. It cuts deep. And it has an effect on your life. It, In, in fact they've done things with plants. And with water. And. They've been doing all kinds of things and, and they've seen that when they say things to plants and they say nice things to the plants, that the plants grow healthy. But when they curse at the plants, the plants don't grow very good. It's because there's power. There's power in your words. And I want you to think about that. There's strong power. So these are the reasons why I'm, I'm reading some of the book and then stopping and talking because I want you to know these things. I think it's, it should be very clear to you what I'm talking about. Let me read on a little bit more. When we die, there's an odd thing that happens. You instantly know things. Everything you ever needed to know, you now know. It would be kind of like being given an entire encyclopedia and knowing everything in it in less than a second. No one has to tell you anything or describe anything to you. You just know it through your whole being. Our spirits, as I have learned, doesn't have a brain to mess things up. We get the same thinking capacity as heavenly beings. As heavenly beings have without our brains trying to analyze everything first. You just know it and you accept it. I want to make this real clear. In the flesh, there's only so much that we can know. There's only so much we can grasp. You know, we think about it and, and there's things that we can know in the flesh. But your spirit knows things beyond what your flesh could ever imagine. And I talk about this a lot when I preach and, and, and speak at places around the world. And I tell people this, that your spirit knows more than your mind could ever dream of knowing. It's like 
when somebody comes up to you and they have a word of knowledge, it's from the spirit. It's not from your brain. You're not like going, woo, let me read your mind. No, the spirit goes, bah, let me awaken this. Let me show you, boom. And a word of knowledge pops in there. All of a sudden, now you know something about somebody. It's a word of knowledge. Your spirit knows that. And it's instant. The person didn't tell you. Their lips never moved. But you instantly got that from their spirit. That's where it comes from. And that's how it happens. It's one of the most unique things. And, and when I saw that happening, I didn't understand this. You got to remember, this was 1978 that I died. And, and I wasn't living for the Lord then. And much of the, the movement today with the Holy Spirit and learning things about the gift of knowledge and, and gift of prophecy and things like that, it just wasn't around back then. But now it's around. And, and more so. And remember, I wrote the book in 2013. So this beautiful angel went on to tell me some things about my life and what I needed to do when I get back to earth. When he spoke to me, I understood everything and knew exactly what I was supposed to do when I went back. Yet I wanted to stay. Many things he told me or showed me I cannot discuss with you yet as I was told to keep them to myself until a time when I will be told it's okay to share it. However, there are some things that I can share with you at this time. And this is the time of writing the book. There have been a few things that the Lord has allowed me to share since the writing of this book. And I'll be sharing those things more and more as time goes on. I'm going to skip a little bit in here. I'm going to go down. I'm going to skip a paragraph here. And I just want to go down here to one other thing. Another thing I can share with you is I was given several gifts. One gift is to be able to see inside of a person deep into their soul or spirit. This is not something that I turn on or off, nor can I select a person that I can see into. That is up to God. This is not just reserved for church. It happens all the time at work, play, shopping, or anywhere I go. I know it sounds kind of freaky, but it was given to me for a reason. And when God gives you a gift, whether it be, whether it may be singing, teaching, preaching, a kind spirit, a pleasant voice, no matter what it is, use it. God gives us all different gifts. And I know it hurts him when he sees his people that won't use what he's gave them to use, or they use it for the wrong purpose. But his gifts are irrevocable. What I see in the person's spirit, especially during times of worship, it, it, it's just unreal. There are many things I see that I never say to a person unless the Holy Spirit gives me the go ahead. That's just how it works. You see, everybody in the world has been given gifts. When you see these great singers that aren't living for the Lord are out there and they're singing and they have these beautiful voices and they're talented writers. They, they write beautifully and, and they sing and and they do all these things. And even these artists, you know, that they, they paint and they paint all these evil pictures and things, but they're very detailed and their artwork is great. These people were given that gift from God. They chose when they became old enough, they chose that they were not going to serve the Lord. And so they drifted off into another direction and they started doing things they shouldn't do. It's talent. Yeah, you can be, God will give you a talent such as being a very smart person. And when you're a very smart person, you need to use that talent for the Lord. Build things and make things, that not just, you know, not just things for church, but I mean, build and make things that will edify people, that help people. If you're given a brain to make inventions and do things, that's a gift God gave you. God unlocked things in your brain that he didn't do in others. And if you have a voice to sing, sing for the Lord. Hey, it's not about the money. It's not about fame. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's all about him. And if we don't start giving him what he deserves and using the gifts for him, we're stealing from God. Now, God gave me some gifts and my gifts are unusual and they're different. He gave me the ability to speak 
and the ability to remember some things. He gave me the ability to, to see into people. And when I look into someone, I can't tell you unless the Holy Spirit says it's okay. Because I see everything. I see everything in your life. And it's not just in church. It's not just when you come up for prayer. It doesn't matter where you're at. I could pass you in a mall or drive down the road next to you. And, and I'm able to see everything about your life. I don't look for it. I don't try to do it. It's not something I go, hmm, look at that person going down the road. It's not like that. It's just, it happens. Things happen. There was a time in uh, Arizona, my son and I were pulling into a parking space at where we're getting, we just pulled into a parking lot at an auto parts store and this man was backing up his pickup truck. And if he's backing up his truck, I told my son, I just blurted it out. Oh Lord, thank you for allowing me to do that. But I just blurted out. I said, that guy's a bank robber. And I mean, we, we were looking right at the guy. I said, that guy's a bank robber. And my son's like, what? And I was like, uh, well, I know he's a bank robber. I won't go into detail. And so I didn't go into any details. I just knew he was. And like a week later, they arrested a guy and he was in the paper. It was the same guy that was in that parking spot backing up. He had a, he had a Ford truck and it was that same guy. And, uh, God just does things like that. But see, I can't take that. I can't say, oh, he's a bank robber. And then run to the police and say, hey, that guy's a bank robber. How do you know? Uh, God told me. Hey, listen, they're making fun of our president right now because our president will sit there and he says, he says, not only do I talk to God or Jesus, but Jesus talks to me. And there's a, 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 some lady, I forgot her name right now, on The View, and she's making fun of him saying that, oh, if Jesus speaks to you, that's mental illness. And I'm like, wow, I'm sick. <laughs> I'm very sick then. Because if that's a mental illness, I, I've got it bad. I've got it really bad. I've got a very bad case of it. But the problem is these people are blind and they don't realize what they're seeing. They don't realize what's going on. I, I want to read more. Um, I think I'll read just a, a, a little bit more to you here and do a little more explaining. And also now, if you can watch this on Facebook, but if, if you watch this on YouTube, uh, also there's a place down there where you can comment. So if you'd like to ask questions, you can do that. Um, and on Facebook here, you can also do the same thing. And I'll try to get to you because sometimes I, we get, you know, when I do videos, sometimes we get over 200 people and it's kind of hard to answer all of them, but I try, I really do. And when you see a like or a heart or something, I do that personally. So, all right. I'll read a little bit more. I was also shown things about the future. I saw what seemed like millions of people connected to each other with these little things at the desk or on their laps. And they were typing on them. Remember now, this was back in the 70s and computers and laptops did not exist back then. Or if they did, it was only for a select few they had them. I think in 1978, later that year, I think Apple introduced a computer. I think, I'm not sure. I have to look it up. There was some connection to people all over the world, like a big net connecting them to each other. People could connect with each other and talk to them through these little devices and, I, and see the other person on their little TVs. Because see, back then we had these big old monstrosity TV sets that were this wide <laughs> to this wide. They were huge and they were, you know, it, that's, that's the depth of them. They were so deep and we watched TV off of those things. They're not like today. And you young people today, you have no clue with those, those TVs. Some of those TVs felt like they weighed 200 pounds. They were heavy, but these people were walking around with these things. Now, remember this is 1978 and many of these people seem very strange to me. People were walking around talking to each other on phones that had no wires attached, no wires attached. Now I'm gonna pause right here. That was the weirdest thing because in 1978, the only phone you had was not like this phone. The phone that you had, had a wire connected to it. And if you had a wire connected to it, most likely, if you were important enough <laughs> or smart enough, you had a real long cord from the wall 
that you could take that phone all the way down the hallway and you could talk on it in a closet or in another room, close yourself into the bathroom. If it was connected in the kitchen, you could get around the hallway. And that was important. You know, you had a phone like that. They didn't have cell phones. Now, in the 70s, they did go to the push button phones. Uh, I think that even came out in the late 60s in the Washington, D.C. area. But I know we used to have the old, you know, you dial. That's when they talk about dialing the number. It was like, and you'd have to dial a number. Was that sound effect pretty good? <laughs> so we'd have to dial numbers. But now I see people walking around and, and they have these devices and they, they're holding it up to the ear and there's, there's no wires connected. There's nothing. And they're walking around and they're talking to people. And some people are looking at it and, and they're seeing other people on it and talking to people through that. I mean, this, this was unbelievable. There were no wires connected to it. In 1978, that was unreal. But I saw that happening. Go back to that. People were walking around, talking to each other on their phones. They had no wires attached. And later, with these little things stuck in their ear. And then later in time, people were talking into thin air. Nothing I could see was attached to them. Then it was shown to me that they had this little device that had been implanted inside their ear with this little machine. And all they had to do was tap on the back or the bottom of the ear and say a person's name and they could talk to that person. There was another device that looked like a small flat TV and it was very thin that people walked around with talking into it and typing on it. There were many people that were all alone walking and looking at these little phones or flat TVs, typing on them, talking into them. So many people had forgotten how to really communicate at this point, at this, excuse me. So many people had forgotten how to really communicate. And this was all part of the devil's plan to get control of people. Because if they forgot how to communicate verbally, then they would forget how to pray as well. Connect and keep them in touch with machines instead of people. I also saw buildings in space circling the earth, as well as other things I'll discuss as I'm given permission to do so. You see, texting is great to a certain point. It's okay to text a message to somebody. But when you can actually talk to a person, that's better. Even if, even if you're going to call them up on the phone and talk to them on the phone, it's okay. That communication, that talking, it's important to have that. I look at kids today and you ask them a question and they look at their phone to text you to answer. And then they realize, oh, I don't have your number. So they have to answer you and they go, well, um, and I've watched some people type it out and look at it and read it back to me because they can't think of how to communicate. Yeah, that happens. It's happening. You see, that's all plan of Satan. If Satan can get you so engrossed into something else that you can't communicate verbally with someone. Listen, I, I know people that use Facebook exclusively for their communication. They don't really talk to people. They, they use Facebook and, and they talk to people on Facebook by chatting, typing it in. Listen, folks, talk. It's good. I use Facebook. I minister to people all around the world because sometimes I'm up as late as two, three o'clock in the morning and I might be talking to somebody in the Philippines or, or Korea or, or Russia or one of these other countries and I'm chatting with them and I will chat with them instead of trying to talk on the phone so I don't disturb other people that might be asleep in the house. But there's a time you have to communicate. People, you need to set your phones down once in a while. You need to have communication. Listen, I'm guilty of it too, to a certain point. But when you go out to eat or you go to do something as a family together, put your phone down. Talk. Children, young people, teenagers, young adults, your parents and other people would love to hear your voice. They would love to hear it. You see, everything inside of us is geared to the voice. When we hear a voice, uh, I heard something. I recognize that voice. We're made to be able to do that. So that's what we do. They want to talk to you. And believe it or not, 
you want your parents to talk to you. Now, some of you teenagers think, oh, no, I don't want my parents to talk to me no more, man. I am done with it. Every time they talk to me, I'm grounded. No. Anytime you pay attention, it might be that you're grounded, but it's not every time they talk to you. I promise you, your parents love you more than you can ever imagine. You know, I only have one son, but my, my love towards my son is just unbelievable. I love him so much. You know, he's 32 years of age now, but our relationship is solid and strong because God has placed it. We have communication and he's a real techie guy, but he talks. And that's one of the things that I insisted on. And, and, and it's great. But I want you to understand that these are things that I saw 10, 20, 30, 40 years, 50 years. Some haven't even come around yet. I've seen these things way in advance. This was 40 years ago. 40 years ago this month that, excuse me, I'm hit the microphone here. 40 years ago this month that I had this experience. Now, I can tell you that no matter what you do in life, the most important thing is how you end. When your life ends, where are you? Do you have a relationship with God? Because if you don't have a relationship with God, you're going to be in hell forever. And it's forever. 100 million billion years is less than a second in eternity. Because see, when you die, heaven is and hell is. It just is. Heaven's always been there. Hell hasn't. Hell was created. So heaven, hell isn't is. But hell is forever. It's eternity. It never ends now. Heaven has always been here. Heaven is here. Heaven will always be here. The reason why I started this ministry, Real Heaven Encounters Ministry, is because I want you to know that heaven's for real. And the things that you read about in the Bible, some of these things I experienced. When I was up in heaven, I got to experience some things that were just, just unreal. And these things that I experienced when I'm in heaven, you know, it... it it matches up and lines up with the Word of God. These things have to line up with the Word of God. When you hear anybody speak about something in heaven, and they're telling you about all the things that you get to do in heaven, but they're talking about fleshly things, your fleshly desires. Listen, I didn't get to see all of heaven. I'm not going to tell you I did, because it's impossible to see all of heaven, especially in an hour. Oh, by the way, if a day is like a thousand years, I'm just going to say I'm dead for an hour. I could have been dead for three hours, but just for one hour, that means I spent 42 years in heaven and I absolutely loved it. <laughs> so I got to see a lot of heaven, a lot more than I can tell you. And uh, I, we joke about that because one hour equals about 42 years. If you go for one day is a thousand years. And I, I just want you to know that heaven is beautiful. It's wonderful. You don't have earthly desires. You recognize people. You know people. You're excited about things. But you don't have these earthly urges to go do something. You're not sitting there like, wow, man, I, I just, I, I want to go play golf or I want to go drive a car or I want to fly in an airplane. You don't need those things. It'd be unfair to play golf with a heavenly being because they're never going to miss. How boring could it be? A hole in one every time. You know, 10 games of golf, you're like, okay, I'm done. There's no challenge to it. You're not golfing in heaven. All right? Let me just get that real clear. You're not. There's so many more pleasures. There's so many more things. When you find out what heaven's really like and you see the glory of God that's all around and you feel that, nothing matters. You, your flesh is, your, your body's left behind. It, you don't need this. It's not a part of who you are anymore. That The body's gone. All right? So now, since the body's gone, you have the Spirit of God in you. And now you're in heaven, in His presence. And you're just in awe forever, for eternity. You just, you don't have the desires of the flesh anymore. You just have desires of the Spirit. Read about the things that Paul talked about. Paul's preparing you for heaven. Don't desire. 
Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't think about the things here on earth. Everything that you do, you should be doing it as unto him. Your prize and reward should be what you got coming later. Because that lasts forever. These earthly things, they'll come and they'll go. And you're done. And in all through your life, at different ages in your life, there's different things that you'll like better than others. As you get older, things change. And you start seeing things differently. But see, this happened to me when I was 26 years old. I got to see what heaven was like. I got to experience heaven. And I know. I'll read some more to you the next time I do one of these. I'm planning on doing uh, two a week, I hope. That's what my, my plans are. Let's see if we can do this twice a week. And hopefully everybody got something out of it. I'd like to pray with you real quick. Heavenly Father, I just pray right now that the people that are watching this video, that God, you will bless them. That Heavenly Father, that you will open up their eyes and let them understand that they need to live for you. It's not about them. It's not about me. It's not about us. It's always about you, God. It's always about you. And Heavenly Father, I pray that if there's anyone out there that hears my voice and they haven't given their heart to the Lord, that somehow by listening to what we're talking about here, that they'll realize that this is final. This is it. Heaven and hell, you got a choice. Make your decision. And God, I pray that they make the decision to follow you, that they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died on the cross to forgive us of our sins. Heavenly Father, I pray for that. And God, I pray that anybody that needs a touch from you, that they need to be healed, that God, they will understand all they got to do is ask for it and you'll give it to them because that's in your word. Ask in your son's name, in Jesus' name, be healed. And God, help them so they can understand the things that you have in your word about how powerful our words are. You set the example for us. So I ask Heavenly Father right now that you, you bless everybody, that you heal the people that need to be healed. And to God, those people that have broken hearts, that you'll mend their hearts back for them. And you'll help them. Ask these things in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless. Hey, listen, it's great being here with you. And don't be surprised if I do two or three of these a week. Uh, God has just opened up a door this to happen and just to let you know i'm going to be going in to different places of the country in the u.s and canada as well as overseas so if you would like me to come there feel free to contact us um it, it when we set up our website you'll get it uh probably in the middle of middle of next week and today is uh today is march what third so god bless you and we'll talk to you again